Welcome to WebSim third video. In this session, I will explain the different columns present in the table in the result page below the PL graph. Let's use our last simulation, which aims to replicate an investment in the Russell 3000. Below the graph, you find a table with nine columns and six lines. First column is pretty explicit. It gives you the year on which the data was simulated. The simulation settings were set to five years, so there are five lines plus an additional recap line. The second column is the book size. You will notice it is constant and set to $20 million. This means your investment stays at $20 million throughout the simulation. The profits are not reinvested and the losses are compensated by an addition of cash. It is just a convention to compare apples to apples different simulations. The third column is the P&L. Again, this is self-explanatory. It represents the amount of money you lost or made during the year, it is expressed in dollars. The fourth column is the annualized return, representing in percentage the amount of money you made or lost during the period observed. In 2009, the return is 90.92%. When you look on the graph, you effectively see the year ends roughly at $9 million, starting at zero. You might think something is going wrong here. When you compare it to the book size of $20 million, the return should rather be in the 45% if you compute $9 million divided by $20 million. This is not a mistake. WebSim assumes you have $10 million of cash and allows you to invest up to $20 million. This is a common practice in the market. You can buy more stocks than you have cash. It is called leverage. Here, with a ratio of 2 to 1. You can find plenty of information on this topic on the web. All you have to understand for now is performance is computed on a base of $10 million. The next column is the Sharpe Ratio. It is a common measure of performance of a strategy. It is independent of the capital traded and gives a normalized ratio between the returns and standard deviation of returns of a portfolio over the observed time period. You can find literature on this ratio on the web as well. Next, you have max drawdown. The percentage represents the low point of your PL during the period observed. It works similarly to the annualized return. It computes during the period of observation your maximum loss of money. For 2009, you went up to $1 million and down to minus $4 million, which represents a gap of $5 million, implying a max drawdown of 5 divided by 10, representing 50%, which is a good approximation to the exact number in the table, 47.16%. The following column is percentage of profitable day. It is the ratio between winning and losing days during the observed period. Nothing special here. Daily turnover is a percentage of your portfolio which changes every day. Remember, you compute new weights every day for each dot which will generate buys and sells. This number represents how much your weight vector changes. The last column is the profit per dollar traded. This measures how profitable your trades are. This number does not factor in cost of trading. The reason for not including transaction costs is you might have several strategies at play, and you do not want to execute each of them separately, but blend them and only send the net buys and sells. One last thing to conclude this session is the small table above the graph. If you click on it, it will expand. First, you have an overall evaluation of the alpha you submitted. You can find the details on the help page. Then you have your total number of submissions and the percentile rank of your current simulation against all your submitted simulations on Sharp and Fitness. Fitness is a homegrown measure using Sharp return and turnover. This is it for now. See you next time.